Betsy Ross. Elizabeth Griscom was born in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania on January 1st, 1752. Elizabeth, called Betsy by her family, was the eighth child of 17 born to Samuel and Rebecca. Her family were Quakers, a religious group that believed in living a simple, peaceful way. The family was so large that the children had to help with chores. Betsy grew up by sewing the white caps Quaker girls wore every day. See, there she is sewing the caps. Betsy attended the Friends School with other Quakers and children from wealthy families. Besides learning reading, writing, arithmetic, geography, and history, students performed a four-hour task each day. Betsy used this time to sew. She enjoyed creating quilts and samplers with complicated designs. Betsy's needlework was the most beautiful in Philadelphia, and she won many prizes for it. It says, Needlework Contest. When Betsy was a teenager, she begged her parents to let her work outside their home. Her parents agreed to let her work for an upholsterer, sewing the coverings for sofas, chairs, and other furniture. In the shop, she met a worker named John Ross, and they fell in love. Betsy married him in 1773, even though he wasn't a Quaker. The Quakers and her parents disapproved of her marrying someone outside of the Quaker faith. Mm. At this time, America was made up of only 13 colonies on the East Coast, ruled by King George III of England. The colonials did not like being under English rule. In 1775, their newly formed government, the Continental Congress, established an American army to fight the British. The first battles were fought in Lexington and Concord, Massachusetts on April 19, 1775, and marked the beginning of the Revolutionary War. Although Philadelphians knew about the fighting, business went on as usual. Betsy and John set up a small shop in 1775. They worked long hours to make their business succeed. It says Ross Upholsterers. And there they are working inside. John joined the army. One night in 1776, he was guarding a storehouse full of ammunition that exploded. For months, Betsy nursed him with herbs and home remedies. Despite her care, John died. Betsy was now a widow who ran her business alone in a shop on Arch Street. After work, she made musket balls to help the American cause, going against the Quakers' peaceful ways. General George Washington, the commander-in-chief of the army, wanted the colonials to have a flag. Not only would it be a symbol of the colonials' independence from England, it would also stand for the colonies fighting together. He sketched a design for a flag and showed it to his close friends, Robert Morris and Colonel George Ross. Colonel Ross, John's uncle, suggested that Betsy sew the flag. The three men called on Betsy in her small shop. Now it's E. Ross upholsterer. When George Washington showed her his sketch, Betsy looked at it and frowned. Why not have a five-pointed star instead of a six-pointed one, she said. Five-pointed stars are easier to sew, and they waste less cloth. The men looked doubtful, so she took a scrap of cloth, folded it, and with one snip of her scissors, cut a five-pointed star. And I think the flag should be shaped like a rectangle. It would look better waving in the wind. 
than the square flag drawn by General Washington. The men were impressed with Betsy's design and agreed that it was better. Betsy took great care in making the first American flag. She sewed 13 stars shaped in a circle on a blue field. She placed it against 13 red and white stripes. On July 4th, 1776, the Declaration of Independence was signed. The 13 colonies became the 13 United States of America. On June 17th, no, June 14th, 1777, Betsy's flag was described at a meeting of Congress and a resolution was passed. The minutes of the meeting read, Resolved that the flag of the United States be 13 stripes, alternate red and white, that the Union be 13 stars on a blue field representing a new constellation. During the war, Betsy became well known for her beautiful flags, but her reputation as an upholsterer grew as well. She got many important jobs. She worked for Benjamin Franklin, the Society of Free Quakers, and the State House of Pennsylvania. In 1777, Betsy married Joseph Ashburn, a sea captain. Joseph was often away from home. During one of his voyages, British soldiers occupied Philadelphia for a few months. Many citizens left the city, but Betsy stayed to run her business, even though she was alone. Soldiers camped in her house. She was polite to them, but she always let them know whose side she was on. The soldiers came to respect this lone, hard-working woman and called her the Little Rebel. During a sea battle with England, Joseph was taken prisoner. In 1782, when the war was over, Betsy learned from a friend named John Claypool that Joseph had died in an English prison. Meanwhile, Betsy and Joseph's first child, Zilla, had died, and their second child, Elizabeth, had been born. Now Betsy was a widow again. John Claypool and Betsy's friendship grew. In 1783, Betsy, John became Betsy's third husband. They joined the Society of Free Quakers, which permitted marriage outside the faith. Betsy could worship in the church once again. Together, Betsy and John had five children, Clarissa, Susanna, Rachel, Jane, and Harriet, who died as a baby. Although John was a sea voyager, Betsy asked him to come and work in her flourishing upholstery shop. She needed his help, but John grew bored with the upholstery business and went to work for the U.S. Customs House. He became ill the last few years of his life. John died in 1817. Betsy taught sewing to her daughters, her granddaughters, and her nieces. When they grew up, they helped her run the business. At age 75, Betsy finally re retired. Her eyesight was fading, and one of her children read the Bible to her as she sat by the fire. Betsy liked to tell stories about her life. Her favorite story was the one about making the first American flag. Betsy died in 1860. 36. The people who knew her told her story about the flag. Finally, in 1870, her grandson, William J. Canby, made Betsy's story public in an address to the Historical Society of Pennsylvania. Betsy was buried on Arch Street in the garden of the house she once ran as an upholstery shop. The flag of the United States flies 24 hours a day over her grave. And here's directions for how to make a star with five points, just like Betsy's.